Hello everyone, my name is Shree Ledoux and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Updating Pit Topography and Stockpile Information with Minimal Scanning. Your host today is Clayton Fritz. Clayton is a sales engineer for the iSight team in the Denver MapTech office. He offers assistance to both clients and prospects throughout North America. Today's webinar will conclude with a question and answer session, so please feel free to write in questions in the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. I'll now hand it over to Clayton to give you your presentation. Thanks, Sheree. So as Sheree mentioned, we're going to go over a couple of things today. Um, so usually, I mean, there's a lot of sites and you can get some great data of new areas or areas of interest. A lot of sites are utilizing LiDAR scanners. Um, or even just you know regular GPS points. And um, the trouble comes when you need to take this new data of updated areas, whether it be a, a dig face or something like that, and integrate that with the site map that you are currently utilizing. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how, in using some of the tools in iSight Studio, how you can create triangulations from scan data and how you can merge those triangulations with existing site maps. Um, and this method can be used for updating pit data as well as dump data through a variety of techniques. So let's go ahead and jump into the software. So what I'm going to start with first things first is this is some scan data of an advancing dig face. And now this scan data has already been registered and, and uh, filtered down. But before we can go any further with it, we need to create a triangulation out of this so that we can be working with a surface. So let's go ahead and model a topographic triangulation. And I'll bring that into the view so you can see what we just created. So now we've got a we've got a triangulation of the area that the shovel has dug out over the course of a month. And I'm going to put this in a smaller view. So this specific site has had some aerial LIDAR flown prior to, um, prior to this month. I'm going to go ahead and tile and tie these views so that they're both being moved at the same time. Makes it a little bit easier. So the scan on the right, as you can see, I'll zoom out here a little bit, is of the entire property. Um, so this, you know, done once, I think, um, once a year at this particular site. So you've got a nice solid surface of everything and I mean the, the process of updating that whole thing anytime something changes would be pretty tedious and really unnecessary. So you can see now that they're both kind of in the same view. On the right this area was not yet dug out and on the left we've got just the surface of the area that has changed. I'm going to show you how we can easily merge these two together. So the tool that does this in Studio is actually um, a combination surface tool under the model tab. And rather than updating or actually modifying the initial surface, it actually creates a new one for us. So both of these data sets are actually kept intact. We create a new one so you still have those original surfaces that are unaltered. So, And what it does is it actually looks for the boundary of the new triangulation, the boundary of the old, and obviously um, I selected lowest, so it's going to keep all of the facets with the lowest Z value. I'll go ahead and bring that new one into the view here. And it keeps the color of the initial facet itself so you can really easily see this area that's changed. So now we have a new triangulation that still maintains all of the site data that has not changed, but it is up to date with the dig face as the shovel has advanced forward. Now this can also be utilized, rather than using the lowest, um, we can use some different options to update dump data. So I have some triangulations here of a dump. And again, the, the convenience of this tool is that you can just specifically patch in areas that have changed rather than you know, trying to recreate the entire product. So in this instance, there's a small lift here that has been extended. And so what we can do is using that same tool of modeling a combination surface, we'll do that again. Rather than keeping the lowest points, since we're adding material in this instance, we're going to go ahead and keep the highest points. 
And again, it's going to look for you know specific areas and where some of the, the facets are and just the perimeter of each of those triangulations and how they fit together. And in this instance, since the boundary of one had some overhangs and areas where it was higher, it didn't keep all of the new facets. It did keep some of the older ones. So and that could just be um, due to some erosion or anything like that. So let's go ahead and bring that new one into the view here. So now you can see we have a new updated surface with this added lift on the dump. Now this is a repeatable process. This can be done as a project advances over time. So again, and I happen to have some data from an additional month here we can see. So we've got this new, again, a lift that's been extended out and we're already working with one that has been modified. So, but we can easily just run that same process and go ahead and model a combination surface using those two. Again, we're going to go ahead and keep the highest. And it's going to do the exact same thing, except instead of starting with the original base surface, it's going to use that modified one that had that secondary lift already added. We can go ahead and bring that into the view here. So now we've got a nice updated um, topographic triangulation that has both of these lifts modified as they're up to date. Now some sites or just um, some data from sites is, aren't in triangulation form. Um, some people prefer to work with lines, whether that be uh, toe and crest lines or contours. So we can update contours just as easily, just using a few more steps in the same process. So I've got some contour lines here of the same dump, and I'll show you how we can get these updated as well um, if you prefer to use contours rather than a solid surface. So what we do need to do is using that combination tool, we will need to be working with a triangulation. So I'm going to go ahead and take these contours, and these are five foot contours of that same initial dump data set. And I'm going to go ahead and model a topographic triangulation out of these. And what that's going to do is just create a surface for us to work with. And it's going to look a little bit more simplified since we were using contours rather than scan data. But the overall shape of it is still the same. So once we have this new surface made from those contours, I can go ahead and take that surface that we had created using these, um, the updated triangulations. Let me grab that one now. And I'll hide the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to create the, um, I'm just going to create some new contours out of those. And actually I'm kind of skipping a process here. So that surface that we used or that we created using the major contours, this is where we would go through that same process of creating, or I'm sorry, modeling a combination surface and adding in those newer pieces um, with both the lift on this upper portion of the dump and the lower portion. So let's go ahead and do that now. And this one I'm using this, um, I labeled it webinar one, but that's that upper lift that's been added over here on the right hand side of the screen. And then it's going to create a new triangulation for us to work with. I'll add the lower portion. I'll show you how we can generate some contours out of that. And for some reason, it didn't really like it and threw some ugly spikes on the bottom. But we can go ahead and clean those out without much problem. And it looks like it for some reason, put some holes in there as well. We've got some good tools in here. We can go ahead and clean that up. So this is a good time to go over some of the um, triangulation modification tools that are in Studio. If you find an area like this, you can highlight it, and we can actually fill holes. So this will go through and just look at all of the uh, surrounding surfaces there and it'll fill those in for us. So now I'm going to go ahead and color this a single color so we're not looking at it when it looks like it's all patched together. Make the whole thing solid green. So now that we have this new one, 
Um, and it doesn't look like it added that there. Kind of frustrating, but I'll just go back to the one that we had that did. We can take this new updated surface and we can create contours out of that and export those back out. So when you're creating contours in Studio, it auto-populates these two boxes here, the upper and limit and the lower limit with the highest and lowest points. I like to go ahead and round these off to a nice round number, so we'll say this is the 1,075 in this instance, and I'll just go ahead and make the 895 on the dot our lower. And we can keep those um, contours at a five foot interval. We can change that to whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and make them red, and let's add some minor contours. So now that we've got these updated contours, I will go ahead and throw in the old ones. And didn't realize I made both of those red. Let me make the old contours green. We can kind of see the contrast there a little bit easier. And you can see that now we've got a new set of contours that have been updated. And they have added that upper lift as well as the lower lift. Then you can export these back out and put them into your mind planning software. Um, I'd like to open it up to some questions now. I'll hand it back to Cherie and uh, see if we've had any that anybody has written in. Great, thanks, Clayton. As I mentioned before, please write in any questions that you may have uh, in the panel on the right hand side of your screen. Let's see if we have any so far. First one, are there triangulation size limits to this? That's a really good question. I'll actually um, go back into the software to show you something. So there are triangulation size limits. Um, Studio is really advanced. It can handle really large triangulations. I've dealt with you know, triangulations the size of, um, say, you know, 50 million facets. Um, and most of the limitations when it comes to a, a, a triangulation are actually due to um, the performance of your computer. So if you're working with an older machine, it doesn't have a lot of memory or something like that, it could really struggle. But if you find that you have a triangulation and you need to make it smaller, um, to make it more of a manageable size, we've got some tools that can do that. So once you have a triangulation in your viewer, you can actually simplify those triangulations by facet count and it'll default to 50% of the initial facet count. And you can use the slider bar to put it to any limits. So if you wanted to make sure that it was under 20,000, we can make it 19,999. And you can go ahead and preser um, preserve the surface boundaries, and that's gonna make sure that the triangulation has that same footprint. We can go ahead and run that. And what it's gonna do is it's just gonna go ahead and simplify out some of the, um, you can see that it actually keeps basically the entire integrity of the surface and just kind of deletes a few facets and makes larger ones and flatter surfaces. So there are limits, um, but that can be easily managed if you find where you have a triangulation that seems to be a little bit big for your computer. Okay, we have a few more questions. Uh, the next one is, what file formats can iSight import in terms of triangulations or contours? That's a good question. Uh, I say it's pretty forgiving. Um, it's very useful with a lot of different software. So um, as far as importing when it comes to triangulations, uh, we can import a variety of um, a variety of different uh, file formats. And I'll just kind of go into what some of those are right now. So you can see the supported file formats. And when it comes to triangulation, usually you're going to be dealing with a .oot or a .dwg or a .dxf. Um, but as you can see, just on these, the list right here um, on the lower right-hand corner of my screen, it's pretty much unlimited. Um, I have yet to come across a file format that cannot be used, uh, even if it, it's involved in just stripping it down to a sheer text or points file and importing it in that way. Okay, um, we have a few more. What's the best way to export contours to use in CAD software that doesn't create giant file sizes? Um, I have found that DXF is the, the most format friendly, but that being said, that's going to create some larger file sizes. Um, DXFs aren't necessarily known for being great and compact. 
So another tool that you can use for making those smaller, A, you can export it as a, as a DWG. Um, you can also you know, limit your contours to uh, you know, maybe instead of having one foot, you could crank them up to five foot. Or if you find that um, they're just too detailed, again, we've got some simplification tools. So we can actually smooth the lines. And what this is going to do is, um, I'll kind of zoom in here on some areas. It'll actually um, delete some of the unnecessary nodes and try to keep the overall integrity. And I can just continue to click this. You can just see the lines just keep getting a little simpler, a little bit simpler, and some of those sharper edges get taken away. And the less nodes that you have along each line and the contours, it's going to make that file size a lot smaller, a lot simpler of a file to work with. Great. Um, can you combine multiple surfaces at one time, or should you do the combination one at a time? I believe you can. Um, I have never tried that, so let's go ahead and give that a shot right now, and I can answer that live for you. We'll find out together. Um, all right, I've got all three of them in here. There's, there's the one, there's the other. Let's go ahead and see if we can create a combination surface out of all of these. It's a really good question. I could see where that would be useful depending on if, um, if a dump or a dig face or a pit is being um, changed on different areas if you've got multiple pieces of equipment working. And it looks like it was able to do that. Yes, you can. You can throw in multiple triangulations and update it in more than one area at the same time. Great. Uh, okay, here's another one. Is cloud point data processing all done on the PC? And then parentheses, it says client side. Um, I'm going to try to answer that the best I can. I'm not sure I quite understand the question. So there is, there is a field aspect to the point cloud data. Um, my personal experience has been with our EyeSight scanner, and that is all done on the PC. Uh, it comes in, in uh, there's, it's not already in, a, um, a, uh, in the coordinate system, so we go ahead and merge it with the GPS data. Um, several other scanners, you'll have to set up targets, so that's all done on the PC. So um, yes, it is. There is no processing that's actually done in the field unless you have your laptop out there with you, if, that's, if that addresses the question. If not, um, some more clarification would be great. Okay. Could you show us a contour of the difference of two surfaces? Um, absolutely. So I think if I'm answering that one properly, we've got this surface right here. I can go ahead and create some contours. We'll just go ahead and uh, use five foot contours. That'll be fine. I'll hide that. And then our original contours didn't have the um, these lifts added to it. So you can kind of see two different sets of contours from two different surfaces overlapping. One has the uh, the updated lifts. The other one does not. Okay, great. This next one is a multi-question, so I'll ask you the whole thing and then repeat if you need that. If you are using the most recent EyeSight with a built-in digital camera, can you merge the draped RBG image onto the existing model at the same time you merge the DTM? If so, will it simply crop the image accordingly? Um, I believe you can. Um, if I can, if this person would be willing to give us their information, uh, I don't have that data set that has any images with it in front of me, um, and we can set up a private go to assist, and we can kind of go through that a little bit more in depth one on one. Um, otherwise, if I had some some data that had some of that uh, information already embedded in it, we could go into that now. But unfortunately, I wasn't ready for that question. Okay, understandable. Uh, last question that I have here is, can you export a TIN file out of EyeSight? Yes, you can. So um, 
a, a tin file, I'm, I'm assuming that's in reference to, uh, we call them triangulations, some people call them surfaces, some people call them tins, um, but basically it's, and I'll go ahead and, and bring one of them in here. Uh, if they're actually referring to a specific format as a, as a dot .tin, um, I'm not sure I'm familiar with that, but um, you can take this, um, whether you refer to it as a tin or a surface or a triangulation, and export these out as uh, any one of these versions right here. So obviously an OOT, um, pretty usable file, goes right into Vulkan, DWG, DXB, DXF, um, any of the options that you see right here on the screen. She did add, yes, a .tin file. So I am in uh, 4.1, which is currently our newest release, and I do not believe so. Um, I don't see it here as an option. So depending on, um, on what software you're trying to get it into in the, um, in the end of things, maybe there's another format that would be usable. Um, if this is something that uh, you know, a lot of clients are in need of, I mean, write this in and we definitely get it back to our developers. We're always looking for client input on better ways that we can adapt our software to better fit whatever use you need it for. Okay, great. Those are all the questions that I have so far. Um, if there are other questions that you have not asked yet and that you'd like to speak with Clayton with uh, individually, he is happy to take those. His contact information is here on the screen. Um, otherwise, we are getting close to the end of our time today. So on behalf of the entire MapTech team, I'd like to thank you for attending today. We hope you can join our next webinar entitled How to Automatically Generate Stope Shapes, which will take place on May 16th. We hold a different webinar each month, so please visit MapTech.com to view the entire schedule.